Welcome to part 3 of NativeLang.com's course on using the International Phonetic Alphabet to learn about pronunciation in language. This time we'll focus on syllables. The previous two videos looked at vowels and then consonants. If you grasp the basics of vowels and consonants, you already have the material you need to make a syllable. Vowels sit at the heart of the syllable, which is actually called the nucleus of the syllable. Consonants are built around that nucleus. Consonants before the vowel, before the nucleus, are part of the syllable's onset. There may be one or more consonants in the onset. Consonants after the vowel, after the nucleus, are the coda, which is Italian for tail of the syllable. So we can have syllables with consonants before the nucleus and none after. We can have syllables with consonants after the nucleus and none before. We can have a syllable with consonants both before and after the nucleus. We can even have syllables with no onset and no coda, just a nucleus. Languages have different ways of building a syllable. For instance, in Japanese, you'll tend to hear syllables that end in a vowel. Syllables don't have consonants after the nucleus. These open syllables have just a vowel or a consonant plus a vowel. The vowel can be long or it can be short but you'll still stop there, so the next consonant would be part of the following syllable. In English, however, we can have open syllables just like Japanese, but we also find fairly overloaded syllables that involve three consonants before and three consonants after the vowel nucleus. In all cases, you can still use the concepts of syllable onset, syllable nucleus, and coda to analyze syllables in a language. We haven't yet touched on more complex vowel nuclei like diphthongs. When we have multiple vowels within the same nucleus, that's called a diphthong. Many languages have multiple vowels sitting at the heart of the same syllable. For example, the English word height contains a diphthong i at the nucleus of the syllable. There are vowel type sounds like the glides y and w, which are represented in IPA like a j and a w. Y and W are treated as consonant sounds, but they're vowel-like sounds that can straddle a main vowel to form a diphthong. Sometimes the vowel in the nucleus is simply held longer. It's the same vowel, but it's held out for a longer time. You can represent such long vowels in the IPA with a double mark after the vowel. So the vowel E can be lengthened to E. I've been talking about vowel nuclei, but a consonant may sit inside the nucleus of a syllable instead of a vowel. Take the English word nerve. Some speakers pronounce that word nerve with an R as a syllable nucleus. When we write syllabic consonants like this R in R IPA, it's conventional to place a small stroke beneath the consonant to signal that it's acting as the nucleus. Let's talk a bit more generally about transcribing speech for a moment. You've seen slashes around my IPA text. These slashes are used to open and close the IPA characters. For example, this is a transcription of the English word dashes, and this is a transcription of the Italian word farà. Both transcriptions are enclosed in slashes. You can break your transcription into syllables by placing a low dot, a period, between each syllable, like this. These basics will get you started as you tackle syllables in any language you're learning. Join me next time for features that apply to longer streams of sound, and check out the webpage for examples, exercises, and more information.